All right, welcome to this new weekly outlook. It's currently the Sunday 17th of March and let's dive deeper into current week. Starting as always, we're going over the Forex Factory economic outlook for all the news reports. And if we take a closer look, we have a quite exciting week. We have on the USD pairs, we have the federal fund rates. So the interest rate, they expect to, to stay the same, uh, but you know how sensitive the market can react to these news reports. So you know, okay, around this news event, it can get quite volatile. So I would avoid trading on Wednesday before the FOMC and just continue on Thursday. Thursday we also have unemployment claims. And also on Friday, we have Fed Chair Powell at the speaking. So the majority of the moves for this we will probably be from Wednesday on. And if we look at the other pairs, we have AOD, red folders, we have Canadian CPIs, also big ones. Uh, also a really interesting one, we're going to look over some GPY pairs as well in a few minutes. Uh, we have the monetary policy statement on Monday. And after that, we have a bank holiday. Quite strange. I won't be touching it on Monday. I will be touching it after their bank holiday. We have the European news, GDP news. So we have lots of red followers this week. Very exciting. So let's dive deeper into the market itself. On the right side, I marked out the pairs I'm looking at. The D5 and GPY are the currencies when the pairs start with the NQ. So you can take a screenshot, pause the video if you want. I'm going over all these pairs. Starting off as always, DXY. Um, if you look at the monthly, we still have this internal to external movement. We'll be anticipating. And last week we saw here on Thursday, we saw a big move up. Lots of people were anticipating this Tuesday high of the week. So everyone, everyone I was um, shorting the dollar along the, year, the, the, the dollar pairs. But they all got caught in this move. And if we look at the weekly, what we currently have created, because last week closed, we have a small weekly fair value gap. And my bias is still bearish for DXY. So I'm looking at movement. What's price does in this week for value gap and anticipating the move down. If somehow DXY will continue and not respecting any premium erase right here, I'll be looking at DXY going to this high. My overall bearish is, my overall bias is bearish for DXY. All right, with that in mind, we're going to take a look at the GPY basket. We see that we have a daily for value gap. We have bearish movement, bearish momentum, sells the liquidity down risk down here. If we look at the four hour, you see a clear market maker sell model appearing. Take out liquidity, displacement lower, for value gap entry right here. More down right here. We have another for value gap with an order block, high probability order block, and moving down. So I'm expecting price to trade at least to these and these lows and perhaps to, to the sell side liquidity resting below here. So we got a bearish dollar, probably we got a bearish GPY. We have two bearish pairs. You will be trading the dollar against the yen, use, use the GPY pair because if both are declining, it will just consolidate the pair itself. Uh, and that's it. Let's take a look at NQ. NQ uh, caught a nice short. I caught this one right here. To the downside, taking out this low. If we look at the daily, I'm not quite happy with the movement. Yes, we have an SMT with uh, YM, with the Dow Jones. But I won't change my bias to bearish until we have displacement lower. Preferably taking out this swing low with, with massive momentum lead for value gap and then going downwards. If it doesn't do it, I will just look at this as a pullback in this for value gap to trade higher to all time highs again. So let's see what AQ does this week. Uh, also a very interesting price movement I had for AQ, especially with the federal fund rates around those big red folders like CPI, FOMC, and NFP. You see the NFC is moving like crazy. So I'm uh, very curious about what we're going to see. Uh, we have a bearish DXY in our head. So this means longs for AOD USD. I have two colors. Uh, this week got AOD, USD. I was trying to long right here, but as I said, there was more downside coming. And uh, what's really interesting here is you only want to short in premium and long in discount. And we currently are in the premium of the range. If you go to take an OTE entry, the ICO total trade entry, I'm going to release a video about this uh, beginning of April, if I'm said it correctly. We're almost at the OTE area. 
And what we have right here are order block on the daily right here inside a discount for value gap. So around this level, I'm going to look for market structure shift to the upside on the lower time frame to hunt for log. We have some player swings right here, and we have this buy side liquidity resting as well. And this is in line with the monthly bias from internal to external. So let's see how it reacts right here. And if it doesn't respect this monthly value gap, if it's still trading lower, we're just going to hunt for a movement to this sell side liquidity down here. So perhaps you can see already quite flexible in the movement. So let's just see what price gives us. If we see this monthly value gap being respected, we're going to hunt for the high right here to these highs. And if it doesn't, we're going to hunt for the sell side liquidity. If we look at the daily right here, uh, my money will be on longs, but let's see. Euro USD, uh, we created on the weekly A for value gap. So interesting what we'll do here. So again, if DXY is going to continue higher, we will see lower Euro USD. And if we, what we expect is a lower DXY, go to hunt for these equal highs as low hanging fruit, and eventually also this swing high right here. GBP USD is kind of the same as uh, Euro USD, weekly for value gap. Let's see how we respond in this weekly for value gap. If we see that marks are shipped to the upside, we go to hunt for low hanging fruit this high and eventually also this monthly for value gap. I'm going to the monthly if this big for value gap resting here with a clear swing high, a spy side liquidity to add lots of premium arrays to uh, to be traded to. That's it for the USD pairs. Let's then go over GBP CAT. GBP CAT has a clear draw on liquidity that is the weekly for value gap right here. And we almost touch it. So what the price did is took out this, this high and then moved away. So what we will go to look at is the lower time frames. Okay, where can we perhaps find an entry to trade to this weekly value? Okay, this all fit. This is price just getting in early sellers to take them out eventually. And what price did is if we look at okay, does price respect bearish P D race, bearish race, I'm gonna say, you have this value gap, it respects it. We go even higher. We have another for value gap. Okay, get respected. We have here another for value gap together with an order block right here. This down close candle also gets respected if we trade into the wick and then trades higher. So right here, and then it goes even higher inside this daily for value gap. And also we have the mean threshold of this down close candle, this the daily order block. So Every time there is discount raise being respected, that means price is bullish and an hour it will just keep in the buy program until the higher time frame objective is reached. And my money is on this weekly for value gap to be the draw on liquidity. So I'll be hunting GBB cat longs this week. Then for Euro cat, I have this bias all for lots for a long time, and it's kind of the same as GBB cat. We have a discount array here. If the value gap gets respected, also the value gap gets respected and together with the order block. And now we are consolidating for over a week right now. So that's not very pretty uh, price action, but as we know from the algorithm, after consolidation, you can never get a reversal. So after a consolidation, there's always an expansion. And with these clear equal highs resting above here, this like re high probability. So early this week, I'm going to go to lower time frames to check, okay, where can I find a, a lower time frame setup? So for example, what happened here under one hour, we have this clear draw on liquidity. And here, this low gets taken up. And what price did there is mitigated. The rest of this fair value gap, what was still open was this part. And you see how precise it, it did that inside this order block. And then moved away, broke structure with displacement. So I'm kind of bullish already on this price action. It would be nice if you get one more tap and then leaving. And if it already leaves, I'll be taking early on the entry on this to catch this low hanging fruit from this equal highs. Then for USD CAT, what we see on USD CAT is quite interesting. If I'm going to zoom out a little bit, we have this phantom trend line. We know that from the IST, this is all fake. So there will be a rapid move downwards very soon. And uh, my money is when USD 
what DXY is going down in the next few weeks or months, we will take out all this liquidity. So this can be also a little bit swing position very soon. On the weekly, we don't have too much to look at. Uh, and daily, it gets more interesting because we have this clear equal highs resting here, but we also have lots of failure swings right here. We got this equal highs resting above here, and we also have some equal lows resting below here. And with the DXY movement in the back of our mind, we'll just see, okay, which one gets taken out first. Uh, where my eyes go to is this daily for value gap. This order block is not very high probability. And why is this order block, like these up close candles, why is this not a very high probability order block? It's because price doesn't take out any liquidity right here. So this, I don't think this order block will uh, get respected. So that's why I'm also not aiming on this gap to be respected. I think price will trade over this high one more time and then displace downwards, leaving for value gap, breaking structure, and then take out all the liquidity on the downside. I have it. I have this pair on my watch list, but I won't be trading this until later in the week, probably on Thursday or Friday, I will look at it. Then go to the GPY pairs. And we discussed earlier in, the, in this outlook, GPY is very, very bearish. So this means Euro GPY and GB, GPY will be bullish. And this is very nice because we have a clear drawn liquidity. We have this equal highs resting here. We have this massive movement upwards on Friday. So if we have that, we're going to look at the lower time frames to see, okay, what can we see? This could be a breakaway gap. So I will be looking earlier this week at price, probably trade into this for value gap and then moving higher. This is so clear drawn liquidity guys. So I'll be quite aggressive with my entry, especially with GPY is so bearish and we have this clear drawn liquidity. So if you have a weekly open, if you buy below the weekly open, where it is, look for a nice discount array where you can frame your trace around and uh, yeah, you can go for it if you like. Now with GBP, GPY, same story, respect the discount arrays with a strong GBP together with a weak GPY and that's a recipe for longs. And aside from this buy set liquidity, we have the long-term target of these highs right here. So let's see what price gives us there. Uh, European, Euro and GBP, GPY. Uh, look during the week, which pair is stronger. Just go to the Euro GBP and look which, which of the two is stronger and trade that pair against GPY to get your best long setups. Then we go to GBP, GHF. If we go to the weekly, we have also really clear drawn liquidity. You know the drill price goes from external liquidity right here towards Internal liquidity is for value gap. It breaches, so we have a mark structure shift right here. And now we we look at, okay, is price respecting this counter race? Yes, it does. We have this for value gap getting respected, displacement upwards again, and we have this really clear draw on liquidity. It's almost there already. And like a 40 pip move towards the weekly for value gap. So what I will look at prob probably is how price will react inside this weekly for value gap. Gets, it, gets respected, okay, that would be nice. We can go, for example, from this internal liquidity back to this for value gap, or we can just keep along it until this high. It depends on if price gets respected to the weekly value gap. This could be an early week long towards the weekly value gap is lowering fruit, and then just see how price respects that premium array. Then we go to Canadian dollar switch franc, and I share this in my Discord group. Uh, we have a potential swing trade right here. If we go to the monthly first, the monthly is not that much to see. We have price take out sell side liquidity and not moving upwards. Uh, but if you go to the lower time frames on a weekly, we already have some discount arrays being respected. But the most clear one is the, the daily chart. We have this order block right here. Why is this the order block? This down close candle because this one is taking out liquidity. And this order block gets respected. We see a displacement upwards, leaving it for value gap and an order block. Price touches it and moves away again. And now it's quite consolidating. And we know after consolidation comes expansion. And we have so many low hanging, hanging fruit right here. We have this high resting. We have this high resting. 
we have this day CB. Very good resting right here. So we've got so many potential targets. Uh, so you could possibly swing this. It's like a 300 pip move. For the challenge on the prof firms, you can just have your bullish buys in mind. Uh, so let's see earlier this week. If this daily for value cap and order block gets respected. Why is this the order block? A high probability order block. Because these down close candles take out this liquidity, this swing lows inside a daily for value cap and an order block. So this is a high probability. So I'm expecting price to be to hold this. It can trade down to the mean threshold, but it should trade higher. So early in the week, I will be looking at okay, how does price respond right here? Do we see that lower time frame market structure shifts to the upside to target first these highs and then move higher to complete those higher targets? This will be one of my main picks for the week. Then we have GBP AUD. This is a clear example for from internal to external raised liquidity. We see the daily for value gap gets respected probably. We see a big rejection here. So our next targets will be these equal lows. We have lows. We have lows right down here, down here, down here, and down here. It's all failure swings. So that's that means a low resistant liquidity run towards this daily for value gap. So I will be hunting shorts for GBP AUD this week. Then go to GBP NZD. If you look at the weekly, we have this weekly for value gap get respected. It get trade into a high probability order block. Why it's the high probability? Because it trades this down close candles. These three take out this swing low, this liquidity point inside a weekly for value gap and another order block. So this, high, this should hold and it does. So I'm expecting price to trade into this weekly for value gap, take out these equal highs, really clear drawn liquidity here. Let's see if we can go from this for value gap back to this for value gap, or just keep pushing up, taking out this swing high and eventually this swing high. So let's see what price gives us there. We already go for low hanging fruit and low hanging fruit is quite clear right here. This is the equal highs right here and the weekly for value gap. So you should hunt for that. And that's it for this week. Uh, yeah, lots of exciting news reports coming out. So please be careful. Uh, and don't, for example, don't bet the farm during the FOMC. We got lots of manip manipulation going on right here. Look at your weekly profiles, which one are the best to navigate all these red folders. I'm going to filter only on red. You see, there's a lot of news reports, guys. So um, yeah, exciting week. Let this, let this be your guidelines. Let this be your roadmap. And uh, if there are any questions, please reach out to me via, via Twitter or leave a comment. And uh, if you like this, these kind of videos, please like and subscribe. The channel is, is growing. We already have 150 subscribers and every single one of you means a lot to me. Uh, I love teaching this kind of stuff to you and I will be keep doing that. Uh, lots of new content in the pipeline. We're going over all the PD arrays with mitigation blocks, order blocks. We're going over market structure of daily bias, over TD entries, like all the different IST topics will be covered in this channel very soon. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.